Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Ignat and today we're going to talk about passwords and copy-paste. First a little bit about myself. Uh, I work at Cloudflare, I do mostly performance and security. I'm also passionate about crypto and enjoy low-level program. Okay, let's talk about passwords first. Passwords actually have a very long history. Uh, first passwords were known to be used by old ancient Roman Empire uh, in their uh, military operations. And passwords are still being widely used and it's the most common widely used pillar of authentication. And that's why passwords are still being a valuable target for an attacker. So let's check out the most common password attacks. The most simple and obvious one is a brute force attack where the attacker just tries every possible combination of a password until they succeed. The second popular attack are dictionary attack, uh, which is basically not what you see on this slide. It's when the attacker compiles a list of the most commonly used words as passwords, creates some automation and also tries all of them into a specific application or service until they succeed. And finally, we have services account or hijacks or leaks. And these can be further broken down into the client side, where we have phishing emails, fake pages, or social engineering, or server side, where we can have a database leaks, code vulnerabilities, and social engineering as well. And to counteract all these uh, modern passwords attack today, modern secure passwords should be long, random-like, uh, hard to guess, and also, most importantly, never used for an website. In practice, though, what it means that long means they're hard to remember, random-like, they mean it's hard to remember, hard to guess means hard to remember, and never used for an websites mean n times hard to remember. And the more uh, the more the like sophisticated attacks on passwords are being developed, the more uh, complex our modern passwords are becoming. Luckily, we have a solution to that. It's called a password manager, where to cope with this ever-growing complexity of, of our modern passwords. So with a password manager, you don't have to remember each of your passwords. You, you take all your passwords and remember they are unique for all, each service you're using. Then you take a database, you store all your passwords in a database. Then you basically come up with a real, one really secure master password converted to cryptographic key and encrypted database. So with password managers, you don't have to remember many passwords. You have to remember only one secure password. And your other service passwords can be as complex as required because computers are better at remembering complex things than humans. Uh, your passwords also are totally random looking like and they can be unique per service and also it's very simple and easy to use. That's it. Happy end uh, and see you next year. Well, not so fast, right? Uh, only we, uh, we just, password managers helped us to solve the ever growing complexity of modern secure passwords, but now we started seeing instances where uh, some web service developers starting to block copy paste. Basically, the basic assumptions around the password manager that you can like uh, copy paste your complex password from the password manager into the some service uh, password input field. But many developers started blocking that. And back in the day, uh, famous security researcher Troy Hunt made like a so-called investigation why web service owners do that and most common reasons he got was uh, the first one is that some developers have uh, concerns about clipboard security so they think malware may intercept the password from the clipboard but for some reason they don't think about that the same malware can probably intercept keystrokes as well uh, some say they protect themselves from password brute force uh, somehow they imagine that attackers just manually type in and brute force password by hand in front of the computer. So it's probably not a really valid argument. Uh, some uh, reference some compliance requirements, but when you ask them which ones, no one really points out uh, which ones. 
and like more obscure answers is because it's our procedure because this is how it works luckily there is some rebel movement around uh, to counteracting these services and uh, allow us to paste our secure passwords from a password manager and there are some things you can do to uh, work with these services so the first thing you can probably do is if you're using firefox you can set this config option to false which will disable javascript on copy and cut and paste events and so the web application will not receive those events and those events are usually used to implement all the uh, copy paste blocking techniques in javascript and it has no extra dependencies it's easy uh, uh, but it's not very reliable because there are some other events developer can utilize to detect copy pasting activity and it's not portable it's for firefox only and also it can break other functionality so modern uh, javascript uh, reactive javascript applications extensively use these events for other usability and functionality and by disabling these events you can completely break the web application so this approach is not very great so it's basically like cracking a nut with a sledgehammer the second popular approach we can take is we can use some kind of specialized browser extension to unblock copy paste and these come in usually come in two, fla uh, two flavors the first flavor is they just inject more javascript into your uh, document object model which tries to counteract the paste blocking javascript these are most likely third party extensions and they actually like unblock uh, copy paste functionality in the web application the other kind is they just uh, manipulate your docu document object model directly as you browse the uh, web and they uh, prefill passwords for you these come from the password manager vendors themselves because they actually need access uh, to uh, to your passwords to uh, to do that uh, yeah the pros for th this approach is it's easy uh, it's easy to install usually these are extensions that are available in your browser web store and they usually require zero configuration the downsides are they're not very reliable though they may not capture all blocking techniques and again they're not pro uh, portable uh, usually these extensions are available for firefox and chrome and not for uh, more rarely used browsers and again because these extensions mess with your document object model with your browsing data they can break other functionality the another downside for me for this approach is this basically when you install any of these extensions you will get a similar warning saying that hey uh, the browser extension you're about to install can read and change all the all your data on the websites you visit so it can manipulate all your browsing data and basically it has to do that because this is by design to, uh, to unblock paste the these extensions need to manipulate your browsing data but also think about the these extensions are ru running within the browser themselves as well and they have full network access so red, let's recap you're installing a third party code which can manipulate all your browsing data and has full network access. What could possibly go wrong here, right? And even though like most of these extensions are not malicious, uh, the, the developers of these extensions are not malicious, these extensions are more likely to be hijacked by attackers and then uh, like, like achieving some kind of code execution and then the attackers might be able to see and manipulate all your browsing data which is not great so yeah i was trying uh, to solve this problem and i was thinking like can an, an operating system instead ha help me to unblock the copy paste functionality in such web application and there is hope and i came up with an approach which i'm going to present now so but before that let's like from a like 1000 feet view uh, review how these paste blocking techniques work so you have like a javascript enabled web application you have some users 
these users might try to paste the password from a password manager or type it in. So what this web application does, it usually implements some kind of filter which tries to detect the paste activity and block it and just allow the typing activity from the user. And the uh, all these browser extensions, what they it, to unblock paste, they, what they try to do is they try to find that filter in the web application and disable it. Uh, with operating system approach, we take a slightly different uh, strategy. So instead of trying to make the filter and instead of pasting the password directly into the web application, we paste our password into the operating system or some process in the operating system. And what that process will do, they will convert our paste to typing activity and type this password for us. So we will not try to subvert the web application's paste blocking filter, but we will instead just provide the password in the way it expects it by typing. The only difference is that the typing will not be done by a real person, it will be done by your operating system. So I wrote a simple tool introducing uh, PassKB. So again, we have the web application, we have the users, we have this simple command line tool where you can paste the password from the password manager there and this tool on Linux will use a special dev input device and on Windows it will use the send input function which will convert your password to typing and provide it to the web application. Let's see a short demo how it works. Okay, so I have a uh, three fields I have a like very poor password manager with a simple document so the green field allows you to copy paste and uh, the red fields do not allow you to copy paste and they use two different techniques to block you so let's try the we see we can paste the password in the green field but we cannot paste the password in the red field so let's try to use my tool you open a terminal uh, you launch the passkb tool and then you paste your password there and then you have five seconds to transfer the cursor back into the block paste block field and the operating system types it in let's try different paste blocking techniques technique again let's launch our tool paste the password return the cursor back and the operating system types it in Okay, uh, yep, so as you saw, uh, the advantages of this approach is cross-platform, it's fully browser independent, it works in any browser and beyond, so the operating system doesn't care where to type uh, the password as long as the cursor is in the right place. It has no access to your browsing data because it's a separate, separate process, it doesn't run inside the browser. It has no network access. You can, because it's a separate process, you can further constrain it, sandbox it, jail it, and allow it only to generate typing activity whatsoever. Uh, it has, uh, it follows the Unix uh, do one thing philosophy. So this tool only like types the passwords, and it's simple and reliable. There are no settings to manage. There is no state. There is no heuristics and there is no regex to configure. And most importantly, the advantage of this tool now, it cannot be detected and blocked by these websites because from the web application's point of view, it sees the typing activity and it technically cannot tell the difference if the typing is done by a human or by the, app, I, the application. So there is no way a web application developer can now block copy paste uh, on their input forms. There are some downside, of course. It's the tool still doesn't work for macOS. Uh, help wanted. Um, the tool doesn't work on mobile devices. Uh, mobile devices are a bit different, and I think both Android and iOS have now have already much better workflow to pasting passwords into uh, uh, these input fields. So probably even not needed there. And as you saw from the demo. The big downside is the usability. You basically need to run a terminal session alongside your browsing session. Uh, you need to some 
you need to do some additional setup and configuring on Linux to uh, fix the permission of the special debut input device and mo most most obvious that you basically need to quickly switch windows to paste the password so you need to paste the password into the command line uh, application then switch the window into the browser put the cursor and you know, like wait till the passwords will be typed in but other than that i think it's a, a great start to uh, start using a password manager as well uh, with a website to safely start using a password manager with websites who block uh, copy paste functionality so what can you do if you are an internet user and you still are not using a password manager definitely consider start using one already if you're a web developer and you're developing a web service please 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 don't block copy paste because it actually makes your users less secure and not more secure because they can't use the password manager uh, well please use my tool uh, provide feedback if you have the ability uh, please help me make uh, this tool uh, help me to make this tool work on mac os and Finally, uh, spread the word. With this operating system level approach, the paste blocking JavaScript is meaningless now because there is no way you can block copy paste and detect uh, the typing from this tool. So just don't do it anymore. Um, you will not protect, uh, you will not make your users more secure and this approach can always be bypassed and it's just like waste of time and, and frustration. Finally, here are some links. So the first link is the link to the uh, Troy's Khan blog post I mentioned, which describes in more detail about research, about the uh, copy-paste blocking techniques on different websites. The second link is useful in order for us to verify that we're not imagining things. These are official recommendations from UK government to service uh, operators not to block copy paste on password input fields so even the governments advise you to do that the third link is the link to the uh, web page with which illustrates some javascript paste blocking techniques i used in my demo and the final link is the source code of my uh, pass kb tool on github please uh, review the code make a pull request comment and provide feedback and finally, uh, I wanted to say that if you're a web developer and still blocking copy paste, we will find you. And please, 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 please don't do that anymore. That's it. Basically, what I wanted to say for now, uh, I'm now happy to take any questions you might have. Have a nice day. Thank you.